Senior night in Pullman, Washington this Saturday. The Cougs are coming off of another trap game loss, 41-38 at Oregon State in the first Pac-2, Pac-12 championship with just the two universities in the conference. They are going to be facing Wyoming this weekend. They are currently favored by 17.5 points, and luckily for the Cougs, they are unbeaten at home, and their average margin of victory in Pullman this year is at 23 points. They haven't fared well on the road. They've been done much better at home. And so with that, let's get into a bit of the Wyoming preview. Dylan, what do you, what are you expecting for this Saturday? You know, honestly, I'm expecting some some better fan support. 3.30 start, last game of the season, chance to go to nine wins, first time, or it'd be the 11th time in program history. And we're at home, you know, in terms of, of, of staying with the pack for, you know, Alamo Bowl is probably out, but the Holiday Bowl, Las Vegas Bowl, those are still two great options. I'm sure we can get a bunch of Cougs down to Las Vegas. That's not too hard. And I'm sure we've seen it. I've seen it in person. San Diego, uh, the Cougs love it. So, I, you know, the, the biggest thing, Connor, it's it's going to be the defense. It all starts with the defense. I've got no issues this weekend with the O, with Mateer. The offense is clicking. I think Schmetting knows he's a dead man walking. You know, it, 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 the dual-headed running back tandem that Wyoming possesses is a is a talented group in Sam Scott and Harrison Whaley. You know, if we're going by college football playoff ratings, uh, Whaley's an 89 overall. He's their best-rated player. Sam Scott, 79. And uh, Whaley's coming off of an injury. He's, you know, was out for eight to nine weeks, had rushed for over 170 yards in his first game of the season. 16 carries for 69 yards last week against Boise State. And you know, I thought it was pretty interesting the way the college football committee kind of framed that, that close win by Boise State. Wyoming is an extremely, extremely tough place to win. If you remember in 2019, the Cougs started their, their season with Minshew in Wyoming, and it was a nail biter for three quarters. They ended up pulling it out 31-19. And it, it's a tough place to, to play, but you know, Boise State only won 17-13, and this is what the committee had to say on that. They said, we have some people on the committee that played at Wyoming when they were coaches, and they really say it's a tough environment to play in. Obviously, Wyoming gave Boise State a great game, but Boise State won. So, you know, not really getting much pushback from a 17-13 victory over a 2-9 and team, but, you know, it really, it's just take care of business and, and get get these back-to-back weeks and these horrible tastes out of all of our mouths. I mean, you know, it's, it's just brutal to, to, to see where we would be if we were going into this game, 10 and one, probably anywhere 13th to 16th in the country and possibly knocking on the door of the college football playoff. But you know what, this defense, if, if you are an objective Cougar football fan and you know, the game, You know this team was playing with house money all year on the defensive side of the ball. And what happens in Vegas, Connor? The house, well, they always win. I thought they were going to say it stays in Vegas. but Well, that too, all right? In the past two weeks, we were talking about, you know, New Mexico and Oregon State as potential trap games. They both both turned out to be trap games. You know, they, they lost both of them at New Mexico and then at Oregon State. Well, Wyoming... I mean, we're, we're talking about how the Cougs play well at home, but Wyoming, they beat New Mexico at New Mexico two weeks ago. That was 49 to 45. And then as we saw last weekend, as you described, they were up on Boise 13 to 10 in the fourth quarter at Wyoming. That's a Boise team that is now ranked fourth in the country. Are they fourth in the country right now? Uh, well, they're, they're technically College 11th, playoff. but they're ahead of the Big 12 in terms of that automatic bid. Great thing for them, Colorado State lost last weekend, so now you've got the, the Boise State-UNLV matchup. As long as UNLV can take care of business, they'll be there. They'll head up to Boise State. And UNLV has a win over Kansas. They played Syracuse tough. They had some decent non-conference wins this year, and I think the committee respects them just based off where their, their college football playoff rating is. And talking about Wyoming's offense, they are currently 123rd in the country in scoring with 19.7 points per game. They're 119th in the country with 321.6 yards per game. And Connor, you know, you, you mentioned those stats. There's only 133 Division One college football teams, so it's a pretty poor offense. And you say that there's 133 teams that are eligible. Well, 
WCU's defense is 117th in the nation with 437.1 yards per game allowed, 98th in the country with 29.3 points per game allowed. And an article from Cougfan, again, shout out to Cougfan.com. Make sure to go subscribe there if you're not already. If you're a Cougar athletics fan, they've got all of the inside details on everything. But they were comparing this year's defense to 2019 and also to the Paul Wolf years to where they just had awful defenses. And technically speaking, relative to the rest of the country, the defense this year is worse than in 2019 when they were facing quarterbacks like Justin Herbert, Jaden Daniels, Dorian Thompson Robinson, and Tyler Huntley. We're facing Mountain West teams, and we have even a worse defense this year, nationally speaking. Yeah, Devin Dampier is probably going to be working for Enterprise in four years. You know, <laughs> it's like... You get these run-of-the-mill quarterbacks that are making Jeff Schmetting look like an absolute clown. I mean, the guy should have been tarmacked three different times this season. It's ridiculous. And and for Dickert to come out in his press conference and continue to cover his ass, it's 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 baffling to me. I will say that press conference earlier this week, it did give me the hunch that He's not going to be retained uh, the following year, but, you know, kind of jumping back into the game aspect, quarterback play. Uh, we saw it last week, Oregon State. It could have been three different quarterbacks. Cole Branson was was questionable. He ends up playing, throwing for over 350 yards on us. And it's a similar situation this week. Wyoming does not have a dual threat guy out of anybody in that quarterback room. Caden Anderson in concussion protocol. He's doubtful to play this week, so that's going to throw it to the junior Evan Savota, who started the first eight games of the year. He's got four touchdowns, seven picks, only 1,100 uh, yards through the air. So it's a pretty porous passing attack. They are led by a, a, a premier tight end who I think – could have a cup of coffee in the NFL and, and John Michael Gillenberg. He's got 26 receptions, two touchdowns, 364 yards. Poor guy just doesn't have anything throwing the ball to him out there. So, and like we said, it's, it's, it's going to come down to, can they contain Harrison Whaley, Sam Scott, and this rushing attack and not have their defense get worn down throughout the game with Wyoming's game plan of, hey, we're going to hold on to the rock and we're going to try and, and and keep Washington State's offense off of the field as much as possible. Then getting into Wyoming's defense, they are currently giving up 29.6 points per game. They have 11 sacks on the year, just nine turnovers through nine games. And the big key is that Wyoming is giving up 199.7 rushing yards per game, which is 117th in the country. Ben Arbuckle and staff, please hand the ball off to Wayshawn Parker. Let John Mateer get a few QB runs in there. This Wyoming defense is allowing 199.7 in rushing yards per game. It's going to be a chilly night. It'll be 35 degrees Saturday. So this is one of the games to where you hand the ball off, establish the run, and see what happens that way. Wyoming is also 101st in scoring defense on the year, and they're 111th in total defense on the year with 422 yards allowed per game. One last addition, John Mateer, 770 rushing yards through... 11 games. Uh, it's been a fantastic season on the ground for him. And you know what? You heard it here first. I'm, I'm taking Mateer uh, to rush for 100 yards this week. I think he's going to get up to 870. And, uh, you know, it'd be nice if he can pump in something like Texas A&M. I don't think he's got a shot at 1,000 yards rushing as a quarterback this year, but it's been a hell of a year through the air and on the ground. And we've said it on this podcast. I was interviewing some fans at the Oregon State game this weekend, and one of them brought up that John Mateer should be talked about in the Heisman race this year. He is he is responsible for the most total points in the country out of anyone, more than Cam Ward, more than every everyone else. You have Ashton Genty, who is currently playing in the Mountain West. He is basically the Heisman front runner. He's having an outstanding year. John Mateer's <laughs> year so far is in the same zip code as Ashton Genty. It might be a couple numbers off, but he's he's in there. Now getting into senior night, there's going to be 17 seniors that will be recognized. There are three that are not going to be recognized because they're expected to use their eligibility next season. Some of the notable guys that are going to be recognized this Saturday are linebacker Kyle Thornton. This is game number 52 in his WC career. He was a former walk-on. He's been a huge guy this year with some with some clutch plays. Edge rusher Andrew Edson is unique because he was actually the first under Jake Dicker to go through his entire college career without, a, without any impact from COVID eligibility. He arrived at WCU in 2021 and played all four years without redshirting, and he's now playing in his final two games as a Cougue. We also have kicker Dean Janikowski. He is a six-year senior. He was also a former walk-on like Thornton. 
We also have wide receiver Kyle Williams, who has been a massive piece the past couple of years. He needs just three touchdowns to tie Gabe Marks's WCU school record for single season receiving touchdowns with 15. I have a good feeling he's going to break that. I, I expect two this weekend and, and another two in the bowl game. He got one this last week at Oregon State to where it was a screen pass. He dodged a couple tackles, took it 57 yards to the house. It was a hell of a run. That was one of those things where you go, 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 go. <laughs> then, as I mentioned, there are three guys that are not being recognized because they expect to use their eligibility at some point next season. There is quarterback Zebby Eckhaus, whether he's going to be playing here or if he's going to be playing somewhere else, they're keeping his eligibility for his sixth year. You also have wide receiver Chris Hudson, who is a transfer from the University of Oregon. That would be massive. You have Kyle Williams leaving. You've got Chris Hudson to step right in as the number one. Yeah, and you pair that up with a Josh Meredith and a Carlos Hernandez, and you've got a nice little trio going forward next season uh, in terms of, uh, you know, a wide receiving core. And, you know, WSU, they weren't afraid to to give a bag to a wide receiver. And I think if, you know, you're going to keep John Mateer, well, you want to get that man some pieces on the outside that he can play with. And, uh, you know, with Christmas coming around the corner, Cougs, I, I cannot stress this enough. We have got to win NIL in terms of a death of a, a thousand paper cuts. If you can't, you know, do a big lump sum, well, hey, join the 1890 Club Cougar Collective. They're doing a fantastic job. You know, we can always have a better NIL. And, you know, unfortunately right now, the onus is is kind of kind of on us and uh whether you you like it or 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 disagree with it well it's 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 the realm that we're we're in with college football my million dollar donation bounced from my account so i decided to just go with some old crimson coffee i also bought an old crimson mug so that's coming in the mail right now any way possible we need to keep these guys yeah well once we get couch gm to barstool status we'll we'll follow portnoy's uh uh plan and have our own nil packages if we can sway some five-star recruits to come over to Wazoo because if we jump on a Zoom call with, with a guy, I mean, let, let's make it happen. <laughs> and then the third guy, as I mentioned, is punter Nick Harbour. To wrap up the football segment, as you already described, the running back for Wyoming, and this is also from the Coug Fan article, the player to watch this weekend is going to be Whaley, the running back for Wyoming. He's amassed 3,130 yards, 16 touchdowns at both Northern Illinois and Wyoming. As you mentioned, he was injured for eight games this season. And this states that for a defense that has been porous against the run, Whaley is the type of player that could be a problem for Wazoo. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, if you are in a legal gambling state, whatever Whaley's minimum is to make it minus 110, take that over because what has this defense and this defensive coordinator shown you? Well, I tell you what, one way to kind of re release that pain of watching this defense on a weekly basis why not make some money off of it? I guarantee this weekend, WC is going to be dropping like eight, a majority of the game, because that's just how the defensive schemes have been going. It's like, let's just, let's just have let's four on the, on the line. You know, let's just have four guys up here while the, uh, the, the halfback crash comes in halfback dive, halfback dive six straight times. Jeff, please put three more linebackers in the box. A couple of the random notes. So Wyoming defensive line coach Jeff Phelps was actually the def defensive line coach for WSU in Mike Leach's last three seasons when he was in Pullman. He followed Mike Leach to Mississippi State, eventually made his way to Wyoming. Other random note is that free safety for Wyoming, Wyatt Eckler is the younger brother of Austin Eckler. Our Cougar basketball roundup, um, obviously everybody you know, has kind of heard the news over the last couple of days. Cedric Coward is out indefinitely uh, with a shoulder injury. You know, I've had some sources tell me it could be the entire non-conference slate. This is the least opportune time uh, for your best player to go out. Uh, I've got SMU in about two hours. We're taping uh, about two hours prior to this game. And, you know, this is the toughest portion of the schedule. You go from playing SMU, you've got to go at Nevada, and then pretty much you're at Boise. You're not playing in Boise State's arena, but you're playing where their, their um, semi-pro hockey team plays, and they'll have concerts and so on and so forth. So it's essentially a road game. And if you're going to be without Cedric Coward, well, at least you've gotten off to a 6-1 and one start. You're going to have to win one of these three games without him, and then you're going to have to hope he comes back healthy. And realistically... You're going to have to split with Gonzaga. You're going to, you're, you're for sure going to have to split with St. Mary's. 
as well as San Francisco. Taking a look at the wins, it's it's going to be very tough sledding going into uh, Nevada, who's undefeated right now. They've got two good non-conference wins. And, and then you have a Boise State team who just recently lost to Boston College in their preseason tournament, and that's a tough loss for them. They're led by Tyson Degenhart, Alvaro Cardenas. So those are going to be some tough games, and really it's going to come down to some of the bigger guys stepping up in terms of Ethan Price, who had a very good game last night against Fresno State, 16 points, Lawan Watts, Nate Calmis, who you can make an argument is probably – Besides Coward, the, the the player you can't lose, just seeing where the guard play is. Marcus Wilson right now is hurt. The freshman, Rihar Vavers, um, has a wrist issue. There's some concerns that he might take a medical red shirt this year uh, from some circles I've heard. So right now, the bench is short. And you saw Tomas to, to, to Osterson. Uh, come in late, uh, a freshman from Iceland. He had two blocks and 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 a bucket last night. And uh, my player to watch over the next three games is going to be Case Why Not, the Idaho Gatorade Player of the Year. He played fantastic in the 14 minutes he had last night. Didn't really fill up the the box score per se, but defensively speaking, making the right reads, extra passes in this system, you know, I expect to see him starting to, to score a bit more. And uh, I'll share just a DM from, from his dad, Jeremiah. I mean, I was talking with him about his gameplay last night and, you know, Jeremiah said, Hey, yeah, he's starting to get it, get it going on defense. He will get it going on offense shortly. So uh, they're going to need to find other guys to step up with Cedric out. And really the concern comes down to how long is indefinitely going to be. So big game tonight in the Palm Desert. SMU is four and a half point favorites. Wazoo on the money line is plus 190. And, you know, it's it's going to be uh, the return of Andy Infield, former coach of USC, now coaching at SMU. So big game tonight for the Cougs. Uh, if you happen to watch this, uh, this, this preview before the game, we will be doing a spaces, a uh, a Twitter spaces after the game, uh, to kind of kind of go over what we see and 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 hopefully we're uh, we're we're breaking down a win. If you're a Cook fan, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM. Go follow us on Instagram, TikTok for shorts. Make sure to tune in to the game this weekend, to the game tonight, and we'll see you in the next one.